Majesty, worship his majesty. Jesus, we are grateful, we are thankful that you wake us up this morning to see a new day. And as we come into your presence, we come with no other purpose, no other reason but to worship you. Oh, the word of God tells us that God is a spirit and they that worship must worship 
in spirit and in truth. So, Father, we thank you now for coming in. Blessed Holy Ghost, we beg you, please, come in now. Take control, take charge. We thank you for the overflowing today of the anointing, the anointing that makes the difference, the anointing that breaks the yoke. I pray that the anointing will be on everyone who is participating in this service today. So, Father, we tell you thanks now for the leading of your Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Ghost, I pray. Amen. Amen. Our opening song is going to be, Lord, I lift your name on high. And our reading will be Psalm 47. And our brother James is going to be doing the reading.
Psalm 47. Psalm 47, and I will read from verse 1 to verses 9. And if we can just stand everywhere as long as you're able to, bless God. Psalm 47. And I'm just going to ask that you just stand with me, please. Thank you. And it reads, Oh, clap your hands, all ye people. Shout unto God with the voice of triumph. For the Lord Most High is terrible. He is a great king over all the earth. He shall subdue the people under us and the nations under our feet. He shall choose our inheritance for us, the excellency of Jacob whom he loved. God is gone up with a shout, the Lord with the sound of a trumpet. Sing praises to God, sing praises, sing praises unto our king, sing praises. For God is the king of all the earth. Sing ye praises with understanding. God reigneth over the heathen. God sitteth upon the throne of his holiness. And the princes of the people are gathered together, even the people of God of Abraham. For the shields of the earth belong unto God. He is greatly exalted. Here is the reading of God's word. We honor it by saying, Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, word without end. Amen. Our next song is going to be, it's, It is to you I give the glory. And then we'll have a short time of prayer. I know a pastor Stapleton will do that in Jesus' name.
closer to clap your hands and keep it. Shout out to God with the voice of triumph. Hallelujah. Amen. At this time, we're going to have a short, united congregational prayer. Amen. I'll be leading out the prayer. It's not going to be long. Amen. So you can just join in with us. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 5 and verse 14 that we've got this confidence and we have this confidence in him that if we ask anything according to his will, he, he will hear us. That's prayer. Prayer, we've got a confidence that we've got a God that answers prayer. And so the first prayer we're going to do this morning is a prayer of thanksgiving. That God has brought us here this morning, amen, into his house, amen. We've got the celebration with this baby blessing this morning. God bless you for all those who have come to join in the celebration. You can join us in prayer this morning. And we're just going to pray for a short while, a, a, a Thanksgiving prayer. Then I'm going to do a, a prayer of intercession for those who are not well this morning. Father God, we thank you, Lord God, that you are God that are here and answer prayer. God, according to your word, he said, we have this confidence, God, in you. That everything that we ask according to your will, God, you will grant it unto us. I pray today in the name of Jesus, for today as we come, Lord God, in worship and celebration. Father, we thank you for all that you are doing to us today. Father, we thank you, Lord God, that you'll allow us, Lord God, to be in the land of the living. Father God, we thank you, Lord God, that we've come in, Lord God, walked in, Lord, horizontally, Lord God, and not been brought in vertically today. God, we thank you, Lord God, that you've brought us into this house to lift up your holy name. God, we come with a heart of gratitude and thanksgiving. God, we come this morning knowing that you are God. God, and we thank you this morning that you have allowed us into this place. I pray today, God, for this service, the Holy Spirit, that you take full control, God, of this service this morning. Lord, we thank for those who have come to join us in this celebration today. I pray in the name of Jesus that you'll give them the portion of blessing we pray in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. At this time, there's a, a number of prayer requests. Amen. And we're going to be praying for the Blake family. And we thank God for the life of Jason. Amen. A, a blessed young man. Amen. The Lord chose to take him on to glory. And we give God the praise to, for him. And we pray for the family this morning. Amen. In this time of their bereavement. And we pray that God will comfort and, co and console them at this time. We pray for the Christian family. Amen. Who have gone through a time of hardship. Amen. And tribulation. The Martin family who have a, a bereavement. Brother McClary's family. Amen. For those who are uh, uh, shut in today. Amen. Sister uh, uh, um, Susan. Amen. Evangelist Ashman. Brother uh, Gilby. God and, and Pastor Lee. And the list goes on. If whatever I fail to mention today, I know that God has heard our prayer. Amen. For the shut in. And we pray today. Father, we thank you for all the requests today. Father, in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you for consolation, God. We thank you, Lord God, for the life of our, our dear brother departed. I pray for the family this morning. God, we pray for all the bereaved families this morning. I pray in the name of Jesus. You are the great consolator. You are the great comforter. God, I pray in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord God, for what you are doing in their lives. I pray, Holy Spirit, for those who cannot make it with us today. God, in the name, Lord, the list of the names have been read out this morning. God, I pray in the name of Jesus that you'll meet them at the point of their needs this morning. God, I pray for those online this morning who have joined us online. I pray, God, for every need, Lord God, what they have this morning. I pray in the name of Jesus. God, whether they're watching in the United States, Africa, India, Lord, Lord God, the Caribbean, God, whether in this country this morning, I pray that you'll give them a portion of blessing, we pray. God, I pray that you'll bless each one gathered here today in the mighty name of Jesus, and we give you praise, and we can say thank you in Jesus' mighty name. And the people of God say, and the people of God say, and the people of God says, hallelujah, the people of God says, hallelujah, we've come to worship, hallelujah, because in him, Move and have our being this morning. Hallelujah. At this time, amen. We've been having the, the baby blessing. Amen. Amen. And overseer born will be coming. Let's give the Lord praise as he comes on. Amen. I just want to ask you, especially today, especially for today, that we continue in trials for Jason mom there and the lovely family and to also let you know that 
he was going to be godfather and uh, of this baby, he named him. So he's still very much alive. Said, yes, he named you. <laughs> he did. And so it's a mystery how the, how the Lord is working it out. My reason for doing this first today is because we love the families. We love your families. And uh, God is all about families. And you look so lovely in the front rows today. And before the child begins to be a little bit too restless, it's nice to do the blessing. Because I sense in my spirit that God is about to do some wonderful thing. And uh, if the Holy Spirit just takes over, it's going to be a job to stop him to do anything else. So if we do the blessing now, and our pastor, she's just celebrating her birthday. A lovely husband is standing right there. And I believe God has put a word of blessing in her spirit for us. She's a blessing to us, especially to me. And I know that God raised her up for such a time as this. So if you don't mind, congregation, please be seated for a little, all of you. And I will just do this part of blessings and then we will roll on with the service amen yes all families come together it's a time of celebration and also a time of celebration one is to celebrate the life of my son jason and uh, to celebrate uh, the life of his godson Amen, and uh, we want to be able to do this to the glory of God. Say, there's nothing in life, nothing in life that Jesus Christ has really put over to us that there is in our vocabulary the word death. That doesn't happen. It's life. When God breathed into man the breath of life, man became a living soul. When Lazarus, according to man, died, Jesus said, no, this man is not dead, he's sleeping. And I want to prove to you the fact and four days after he was buried, he called him back from the grave. Lazarus, come forth. The thing about a blessing is, as we bless you today, and our pastor is ready to do the word, so I'm going to be concise in what I do, is the fact is this, we pass on blessings. And how, how it works is that the same tongue that blesses cannot curse. And that's one of the reasons why you parents, God parents, and so bring your children to church for the man or woman of God to speak over their lives. The blessing is that Jacob blessed his children and grandchildren. When a man or a woman of God say you're blessed, nobody can change that. That's one of the reasons why James reminds us that what comes from the mouth, we should be very careful about that. For as I said earlier on, if you choose to curse, just carry on cursing because a fountain cannot send forth sweet and bitter water, not at the same time. So, so is the tongue. It cannot bless and curse. Amen. So how many of you understand what I'm trying to say? Can I see your hand? Amen. Anybody understand what I'm trying to say? The blessing, blessing? All right, good, thank you. Never saw many hands, but I saw a head. You know, that's nice. I was met by a father the other day, and his son is in a critical position from the time he was born. 
and he's 10 months old now about, and he said he saw Jesus beside the Father in heaven. Now this man, nothing to do with Christianity, but he had a vision and he knows that his son is going to be all right. So if you're going through some hard waters today, I know it's going to be all right. When I was nobody going nowhere, or mom did, she gave me a blessing. She said, God, bless my son. Amen. Some 60 odd years have passed, and I'm still blessed. And if you don't think so, I know so. I'm 84 plus now. I'm, no, I'm, I'm on no medication. I'm talking to those of you online too. I'm on no medication and I can still run. I can still bend and I can still move around. And sometimes I'm blessed to have, if I'm blessed to have just a few hours sleep any night, but I'm really up alert and ready to go again. God has blessed us and that is the blessing. Amen. And the other thing is, at uh, this age, I hold no man anything but love. I am not indebted to any man. Nobody can say when I go, they're going to call my lovely wife here and say to her, Pastor, owe me one pound. I owe no one anything. As a matter of fact, if anything, people owe me. So God said, I would be the lender and not the borrower. I would be the head and not the tail. So I'm blessing your baby today. And the reason of blessing a baby is because when Jesus Christ was a baby, he was blessed. He brought him to the temple and the, the priest blessed him. Amen? You find this in the Bible. When you, if you search the Bible and you didn't find it, come back to me and I'll give you a thousand pounds. But I'm not going to give you verse and scripture today. I'm going to give you some homework. Amen. So you're, you're going to worth a thousand pounds. So search this. Your name is in the Bible. Your name is in the Bible. As a matter of fact, and it's in the palm of God's hand. So don't worry about what I'm saying here today. Go and search the Bible. And if you never found it there, come back to me. And I guarantee you, you will have one thousand pounds. And then if I pass on before and I'm gone and mom is still here, tell her that I owe you a thousand pounds. But what I'm saying here, I'm not selling anything. I'm telling you facts. I prove this for myself. So what it's really all about is if you have a baby in here, uh, even if you're grown up and you're not blessed, the, the two things, a baby, we bless them. Amen. Jesus was blessed as a baby. And uh, when he came to the years of accountability, he went into Jordan himself, not his parents took him. He decided for himself that the time has come to be baptized. And then he was immersed in water. He decided that this time the old man, whatever, must be buried and walk in. I'm setting an example because he didn't have to walk in newness of life. He was new anyway, all over. But he set an example for us. So the babies are blessed and the adults are baptized. Is that all right? So I'm going to go straight into the blessing and the, the hard work is going to be done by pastor. No wonder we have so many women here today, but she has a word. She has a word for us all. And if you will pray with me, then we can do this and God will bless us. Thank you for those of you online. And right now, if you have your children next to you online, grab all of them and follow me through the blessing and stay blessed. Right, so parent, God parent, would you just come and uh, stand here with me today? Amen. Yes, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. Amen. I, I can't understand how this man could come all the way from Emil Amstead, miles near from London, and be playing music long before some of us here living next door. But by God's grace, all that's going to change because we have to prove that we love, we love the Lord. Amen.
Amen. Hallelujah. God bless you. All right, God parents are here. Oh, they're not arrived yet. Right, good. But we will, why God parent not arrive? But what, what we will do, we will, there's nothing to stop us doing the blessing. Pastor is going to be dealing all the way with that. But what you dear ones here, um, we've got grandmother here, grandma here, and, and we've got some, got some, got some, right? And, and tell me, you promised you were going to do a, a verse of a song for us? Yes, well, come and do it now before the blessing then. That will, yeah, that's my little granddaughter too. She's going to be baptized soon. Amen. Oh, God bless her. God bless you. Amen. Thank you. Um, I'm going to be singing um, Rise Up um, for my uncle. Yeah, that's all right. We'll wait on you, dear. You're broken down and tired. You're broken down and tired of living life.
Bless you, dear. Hallelujah. No. Right? At this time, pastor is going to come to do the reading, both to the congregation and to the parents for me. And of course, we, we want to just humbly thank our little granddaughter for such a beautiful singing to us today. Uh, and uh, uncle, she, daddy, daddy, daddy too. She spared you because we would have done the blessing before you came and we were gonna charge you big money for that. So, yeah, yeah, you know, I know you would pay it. I know, I know you would. But God bless you. Thank you for coming. Right, sir. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Amen. God bless you, young man. Amen. Amen. This is for the address the congregation and to the parents and godparents. Dearly beloved, we are privileged to witness the coming of these parents to dedicate their child to the gracious and loving care and keeping of God our Father and Christ our Savior. God grant that, that we who are gathered today in worship shall earnestly assume with these parents the responsibility for this child's Christian training, insomuch as all of us shall exercise influence upon this child in some way. If you, the members of this church and community, are willing to do so, we ask you to pray for this child that she might, that he might be led in his years of personal accountability to abhor that which is evil and cling to that which is good. Parents, are, hey, yes, he's, he's saying, he's saying yes. Amen. He's saying we do. Now to the parents and godparents, as you present your child for dedication to God, we ask you: Are you willing to de rededicate yourselves? to the maintenance of a Christian home where Christ shall be honored and that the word of God held in reverence so that he may on his, on his own free choice confess his faith mm -hmm. in our Lord Jesus Christ mm -hmm. and accept him as his personal savior. We do. Mm -hmm. So we all say together, we do. Mm -hmm. Amen, overseer, amen. Amen. Well, in the, in the case of we do, can you do one just come over here a little bit come on daughter yes tell my daughter now you've gone looking more beautiful all the time but let's tell my daughter what are you saying to me this teresa high five yeah that's right that lovely smile is telling me you're going somewhere but you're part of what we're doing that's why i don't want to hide your face from me so what we're going to do, I'm going to ask the congregation, yes, stand. If I can stand, you can stand too, can't you? Yeah. If, I, I, I told them yesterday in the wedding, if they don't let go, I can't operate. Don't be too stiff with me. We are all in this business together, and you come for a blessing. Aren't we, son? Amen. That's right. It's your day. It's your day. And as a baby, we bless them. So anybody here today having babies and they are not blessed, it's paramount that you bless them, that they are blessed. Now, Pastor, ask you, as you present your child for dedication to God, we ask you, are you willing to rededicate yourself, amen, to the maintenance of a Christian home? It's not about religion. We are not about religion. Pastor will tell you all about this when you come to deliver the word. We are about relationships. Amen. We are, we are not about just having, um, making people happy. Happiness is something you create as pastor. We give you all of that, it's something we create. But we are about joy. Joy is having a relationship with someone who is real. Amen. So for this reason, we ask the ones who are God parents and parent, if they are not really committed to Christ we are, if they were committed, but they are recommitting themselves specifically to bring up this child. Amen. I'm going to call his name.
Chiron. All right, am I going to write? Because my godson is Aaron. Amen. And you may be listening today. Chiron is in the, in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. And that is paramount to me that you teach them all about the love of God and the divine protection. So right now, parent, godparent, and the godparents have turned up yet? They're not here yet, but parents, that's all right. They will come. Pastor will, 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 will hammer into them. When you, Mom, get the hammers ready for me with the gospel. Because nobody's going to move when she gets going today because God had something in this service today for us. But those of you parents here, it's right that you even rededicate yourself to the maintenance of a Christian home. Amen. So can we bow our heads today? Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise him. Father God Almighty, we commend the parent, God parent, and those who have power to help to bring up Chiron today, that they will be godly people. They will not lead him astray. They will give him good instructions and that he will grow in the way that you would want him to grow because you have given him godly parents and godparents to make sure of this. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, fine. Because you recognize the spiritual, physical, and moral responsibilities of parenthood and your dependence upon God for strength and wisdom to faithfully discharge your duties as parents, amen, do you now present your child in dedication to God, seeking divine blessings and guidance for his life, you will answer by saying, we do. We do. Hallelujah, we do. Amen. And, and we do. Right? So mothers are standing here with us today, and they will take um, Chiron for me. Come to No, I don't blame you, sir. <laughs> I should have done the same thing, Chiron. <laughs> That's it. I should, Chiron, I should have done the same thing. Another mother there, maybe she'll go to, you'll go to her? You'll go to her? That's it. That's it. And Chiron, I tried to, but she kept running from me, Chiron. <laughs> That's it. Well, Chiron, will you come? Will you come to me? Ma'am, that's it. My young man, look at me. Look at me. Yeah, good boy. Charm man, charm man, charm man, charm man. Say, say something now. Say something. Yeah. Tell them to give the Lord a praise. <laughs> tell, them to give, <laughs> tell them to give the Lord a praise. He's a wiser man than me. I should have run when I see him home. I run to her. <laughs> I should have run away from her. Eh? Good boy. Say something, man. Yeah. Come and tell them that they're sinners and they must be saved. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Go on, tell them. Point your hands at Chiron for me. But his name is going to be called Chiron. The next one is? The, his next one. The, the, Sawaran. Kamar. Kamar Kelly. All right, good. I'll keep on Chiron because trace the name in Chiron too, all right? So let yeah, man. That's it. No, you, you'll be all right. You look too handsome for being so rough, man. It should be nice. That's it. That's it. That's what I say. Yeah. Can we pray first before you preach? Point your hands at him for me. Hallelujah. We have witness, Lord, millions of our babies, millions of them, drunk nobody's water, ate nobody's food, yet they've been aborted. In Egypt, thousands of boys were killed. 
and they didn't do anything for that. But Pharaoh decided to kill them. But Joseph, Moses' mother saw, and parents saw that this was a goodly child. Amen. Chiron is a goodly child. Greatness is in him. He is marked for greatness. He is marked for the top. He will be making news. He will not be just watching news. He will bring joy. He will bring favor. He will be bring honor. Every seat, amen, Chiron sits in will be a great seat. And governors, prime ministers, kings and queens will be running after him. God, he will be the best in his class and he will be the class of classes and he will stand taller than tall. God, this day is a mystery man. Amen. His Godfather named him, then departed, and his spirit will be watching over him, and there shall no evil befall him as long as he lives. For today, as you have invested in me, I take the authority to decree and declare him blessed. Blessed in the name of the Father, blessed in the name of the Son, and blessed in the name of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus' name, amen, 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 amen. You are blessed, all right? You are blessed. Well, that's right. He said amen. You are blessed, you are blessed, you are blessed, you are blessed. That's it. Blessed, 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 blessed. Amen. That lovely lady there, Chiron, he, she, she don't mind. You can take the chance. Take the chance there and go and bless her for me. No. Bless her for me. Oh, no. But but you're staying with me. What about what about going to what about going to? All oh, right, good. Amen. But can I give you to mommy now? Pass him back to mom for me. My reason for giving her back to mom is because, sir, give me your name again, sir. Chad. Chad. Yeah. Why, somebody say, thank God for, point your hand at this young man for me, Chad. Yes, sir, and he's going to be taking my place. Come up here, man, come up here, man. See, he looks nicer up here than me, doesn't he? Yeah, man. <laughs> say something to them, man, go on. I just want to thank everybody for coming out to Karen's Blessings, and blessings reach out to you lot and everybody. You know, this year has been a very hard and trial, full of trials and tribulations, but the most I still have is standing, so we have to give thanks for that. But blessings and love always to you, lot, everybody that came up from us. Thank you very much. Thank you, man. <laughs> That's the church, family, family. Not about religion, religion, family, caring for people. But no, man. What you said your name is again, sir? Chad. That's it. Now, you have been certified. I'm giving you the certificate that you have been certified. Amen. That Chiron will be in church every Sunday. <laughs> now, the superintendent of the Sunday school is right on your way, but us, man. That's it. You know her too. Yeah, I'm seeing her. Yeah, amen. Yeah, everybody knows Marcia. Amen. She's there online looking up after everybody's children. So, this is to certify you that no evil will befall your son, but you must be a good example to him in Jesus' name. And love you, and love you. You want to come back to me? Yeah, bless you. God bless you. Thank you, thank you, man. It's nice. Some of you standing here looking so handsome and beautiful, still bigger than me now, but I, I lifted you up some time ago, but you are still in our care. God bless you. Now, if you still sit in the front line there and just relax, we are not going to, uh, we're going to ask you to sit. We are not going to break into the service. Uh, but they may give you a song. I think they have a song ready. And the preacher is coming on to bless you all today. So please don't run out and do everything because we want to make it good as parents. Amen. Sister, um, come here to me, ma'am. Happy play. Praise God Almighty. And I want you to point your hand at, at mom today. Come up here. Come up here. Point your hand. Unless you want to say something, ma'am, but point your hand at her. Amen. 
God bless you, ma'am. And give her the strength and the family, Lord, to know that they have done all they possibly could do. Now you are doing the rest. Grant them fortitude. Grant them fortitude. Let it be to your glory. And they will know, Lord, that their best is still yet to come. In Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you, dear. God bless you. If you want to give us a song, I'll do what you have to do quickly and put our pastor on with the word. Let the family enjoy the church. Amen. God bless you. More babies, bring them in to be blessed. Amen. Thank you. hands. You've not been to Miracle Church before, just lift your hands. Well, I want everyone this morning to know that you're welcome. Let's put our hands together for all of our friends that come this morning. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you that you have blessed us and we bring back a portion of what you have blessed us with. I pray that you will bless it, you will sanctify it, and that it will be spent to the honor and to the glory of your holy name. We tell you thanks in Jesus' name. The ushers will now direct you in giving your offerings, and we will sing this chorus, press along saints, press along saints, and then we will have the preacher in Jesus' name. Press along saints, press along Praise the Lord, sing, praise the Lord. 
hallelujah to Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's just lift up our hands and just bless the Lord today. Let's just worship the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. Father, we bless your name today. We exalt your name, Jesus, for you are worthy to be praised. We bless you, O King of Kings. We thank you, O God, for the baby that you are blessed today. We thank you for the family that is here with us today. Father, we ask that, O God, you touch every heart. You breathe, O God, upon every soul this day. Father, touch us, O God. Change us, O God. Holy Ghost, minister to us this day. Let our lives never be the same. Drop a word in our hearts, O God, that will bring encouragement and healing and deliverance and change. Father, turn around our situation, O God. Encourage every heart, O God. In the name of Jesus. 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 Spirit of the living God. Not my words, but your words. Inspire me this day. Touch every heart this day. And change every mind and every soul, oh God. That, Father, we may go home knowing that we've heard a word that has encouraged us, that has changed our lives, that will touch and move us for good, for your glory. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And the people of God say, Amen. Hallelujah to Jesus. I'm going to talk to you today about your time will come. I'm going to read Ecclesiastes chapter 3. Your time will come. Say to yourself, my time will come. My time will come. If you believe it, declare it in your own life that my time will come. My time will come. Your time will come. So Ecclesiastes chapter 3 says, to everything there is a season. A time for every purpose under heaven. A time to be born, a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck what is planted. A time to kill, a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance and a time to cast away stones, and a time to gather stones, a time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to gain, and a time to lose, a time to keep, and a time to throw away, a time to tear, and a time to sow, and a time to keep silence, and a time to speak, a time to love, and a time to hate, a time of war, and the time of peace. Verse 9 says, what profit has the worker from that in which he labors? I have seen the God-given task with which the sons of men are to be occupied. But verse 11 says, he has made everything beautiful in its time. Also, he has put eternity in the hearts, except that no one can find out the work that God does from beginning to end meaning it is a mystery I know that nothing is better for them than to rejoice and to do good in their lives what is God saying whatever it is that we are going through we must rejoice and keep doing good in our lives and verse 18 says and also that every man should eat and drink and enjoy the good of all his labor for it is a a gift of God. Your life is a gift of God. And I know that whatever God does, it shall be forever. Nothing can be added to it and nothing can be taken from it. God does it that men should fear before him that which is has already been and what is to be has already been and God requires an account of what is past. So this story, this verse is saying there is a time for everything. There is a time to laugh, there is a time to dance, there is a time to mourn, there is a time for baby dedications as we've done, and there's also a time that one day you or I will die. 
One of us will die one day. And one time, somebody else is being born right now. Because everything is programmed by God. So I want to talk to us today about your time will come. At one time, I'm sure there's something that you wanted to do in your life. There are certain things that you were believing God to do for you. But as humans, sometimes when time goes on and things seem not to be happening, we begin to start to second guess ourselves. We begin to ask did God really tell me he's going to bless me? Did God really tell me that I'm going to get married? Do I really want to have children? Do I really want to start that business? Because when time goes by, as you men, we are subject to thinking maybe... I was wrong. Maybe that vision wasn't meant to be. Maybe that thought uh, was just my mind. Maybe that passion was just me uh, thinking maybe I can do it, uh, but I can't do it. Uh, but I want you to know that your time will come. Whatever it is that you've been believing God for, at the same time, uh, those things shall manifest uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, don't worry. Delay is not delay, denial. Don't worry that maybe you think it's time for you to give up. Uh, you think it's time for you to sit uh, and watch other people do what they do best uh, and you think God I've tried, uh, I've done everything that I could do uh, but I've given up now, I am tired now, I don't even know what to do anymore I don't know what to believe anymore but I just want you to know that God does not abort dreams just because you've given up doesn't mean that God has given up. The delays, the details, the disappointments, that will not stop God's time for your life. Whatever God has started in your life, he is going to finish. Our God is a finisher. He is a God that finishes the battles, the victories before they even start. Because his name is the Alpha and the Omega. He is the beginning and the end. He was there in in the beginning, before you were born, before God created you, he already knew that you were going to come to planet Earth at a certain date and time. That's why no doctor can tell you exactly when you're going to be in labor. They can give you approximate time, but that time belongs to God. The time that you are born is in the hands of God. The time that you will build is in the hands of God. The time that you will die is in the hand of God. Don't worry about the doctor's report. Yes, sicknesses may come, but they cannot take you out before your time. Maybe you have lost your loved one. Maybe you are saying, God, why? I don't understand. Instead of you worrying, instead of you over grieving, thank God for the memories. Thank God for the moments and accept that their time had come and God saw it fit that he wants to bring them into his tabernacle to decorate his temple. Whatever it is that you're going through, your time will come. You will laugh, you will cry, you will dance, storms will come, challenges will come, lockdowns will come, businesses have closed, but other businesses have merged up. And even after lockdown, many, many better things will come our way because we know there is a time for everything. There is a time for recovery. There is a time that everything will work together for your good. Delay will not stop you. Obstructions will not stop you. But what they will do is they will make you stronger. They will make you better. You will grow from strength to strength. Your pain will become your gain. If only you understand that God's timing is the best. That what God has purposed, it cannot be changed. Isaiah 14 27 says that what God has purposed, who can annul it? No one can change your course of destiny. No one can change what God has programmed for you. What God has for you is unique to you. That's why your fingerprints are not the same. That's why the person sitting next to you, if they take their fingerprints, it is different from yours and there are billions of people on the face of the earth because God wants you to know that you are unique. He wants you to know that when he created you, he had you in mind. Your destiny is for you. Your business is for you. Your marriage is for you. Your career is for you. No one can take what belongs to you. Your time will come. Your change will come. Your story will be better. It will be better tomorrow than it was yesterday. You are going somewhere way to happen. God does not consult your past to qualify your future. Your time is coming. It is coming. It may look as though that breakthrough is not coming, but wait a minute. I want you to pause and think. You didn't create yourself. 
You didn't apply to be born, but God put your mother and father together and he saw it fit that you were to be born at the time that you were born because he needed someone like you in this era, in this season. If you look at Elizabeth, she was barren for years. She could have done all that she could do, all the IVF in the world that she could do, taken all fertility drugs that she could take, but she could not override the will of God. Elizabeth had to wait until the set time which was six months before Jesus was born for John the Baptist to be born so that he will come six months earlier to announce that Jesus Christ is Lord, to announce your Savior. So whatever it is that you're going through, it is under the program of the timings of God. God is not too late. God is not in a hurry. He wants you to stand and walk with him. He wants you to believe in him. Don't give up child of God. Whatever it is that people are achieving. Don't compare yourself to them. The race is not to the swift, but all power and time and chance happens to all of them. Your opportunity will come. Your time will come. Your race is your race. You don't need to compete with anybody. You run your race. You stay in your lane and do what God has called you to do. How do you say you're not successful? What are you measuring yourself against? Not other people. Not other people's dreams. Not other people's visions but what you have in store for you what God has told you what is the vision run your race according to your standards according to your abilities according to your talents according to your time and how many of us, you know, I used to like Usain Bolt when he used to run and then when he finishes the race I like that sign that he does and I'm like, oh my God, look at this boy, this boy. He runs. But how many of you know that if you want to run at the, someone else's race, as good as he was, if he crossed lane, if he ran in another person's lane, he will be disqualified. He will not win that uh, trophy. So whatever you are doing, your time will come. Stay in your lane. Run your race. Thank God for your house. Thank God for your marriage. Thank God for your husband. Thank God for your wife. Thank God for your children. Thank God for your business. Whether you work in the job that you think is not that great, the fact that you have a job, the fact that you can put food on your table, it is enough to thank God. Don't compare yourself to anybody. Don't say to your wife, I wish you were like Pastor So and so. Don't say to your husband, I wish you were like Mr. So and so. What God has given you is good for you. Be grateful to God. Appreciate God. Don't compare your life. Don't run other people's race. Don't tell your husband, you know my friend, her husband bought a Cadillac. Buy me one and put him under pressure to do what he cannot do. Wait for God's time. You don't know what people do to get what they get. You don't know who they are. When you see us dressed up and uh, we've got all our lipsticks on, we go home. What you see might not be what you're getting. What you're looking at uh, might not be reality. The person that knows me the most uh, is my husband. You don't know me. You know something about me. But God gave me the man that understands who I am. Uh, God gave me my husband that I understand who he is. Uh, and I'm grateful to God. Uh, I don't run people's race. Uh, I don't compare myself with other people. Because I know that God told me he makes everything beautiful in his time. And what did he say? Enjoy your life. Be merry. Don't delay your happiness. Don't tell your children, we'll do it another time, another year. Tomorrow was never promised to you. Don't tell your wife, we'll go to the park another day. Tomorrow was never promised to you. Enjoy where you are onto the way of where you are going. Those moments, build them with your families. Build good moments with your children. I lost my father and my mother. All the things that I hung on to is the beautiful memories. The way my mom used to cook for me. The way she used to teach me things. The way my father used to travel with me. The way he used to tell me, do this, do this. I hold on to those memories because I know that I had a father that loved me. What are your children going to say about you? What are your spouses going to say about you? Enjoy where you are on the way to where you are going. Don't wait until the millions. 
Don't wait until coronavirus is over. We don't know when it's going to be over. But enjoy yourself right now. Because there were years where we didn't have coronavirus. Now it's here. But we know that the time will come and it will pass. And we know that the time will come and it will be a thing of the past. Because nothing is constant in life. The only thing that is constant is change. It's only things that change. And people change as well. So whatever it is that the devil is doing, don't worry about him. Ask Job. He was complaining. The devil was complaining. He went to God and said, how can I even touch him? When you put a hedge all around him, I can't even touch him. And the Lord said, go ahead, touch him, but don't touch his life. So what am I saying to you, church? There are boundaries. There are certain things that the devil can't do to you. There are certain things that the enemy cannot cross boundaries. Because whose child are you? Who is your God? Who is your father? The one that created heaven and earth. The one that created you. The one that created me. The one that wakes you up every morning. If you think your alarm clock woke you up, take it to the mortuary. That's when you know that it's not waking you up. It is the spirit of God that quickens your being. That you're able to wake up and face another day. And some of the things that you have gone through, the reason why your mind is too coordinated, you haven't lost your mind yet, is because God is holding you up. If not, some pressures, some tribulations, some trials that we have gone through, if you were to look at the weight of the affliction and where you are right now, it don't make sense because there was someone behind the scenes that was holding you up. There was someone behind the scenes that was keeping you together. There was someone behind the scenes that was helping you to still coordinate and be able to say one plus one equals to two. The people today that are in a mental institute, it wasn't their choice, but something happened that was beyond their control, but God has kept you. God has made sure that you are still who you are. You can still coordinate, you can think. They call you Carol, you understand it is Carol they are calling. They say Pastor Sepulton, and you understand that they are referring to me. It is only the grace of God. It is only the message of God that you can go into your car and drive and do the things that you need to do. It is the grace of God. Many times we want the big things. Many times we want the big testimonies, but we forget about the little things that make a big difference. Everybody needs something. There is nobody that doesn't want something. It doesn't matter how good it looks. Everybody is believing God for something. Everybody wants perfection. How is it that the celebrities with all the millions in their bank accounts, you see them on Facebook crying, saying they are not happy, they are sad, they are depressed. There is something that is missing because you always need something. You can never be 100% fulfilled on this earth. There is always something that you will need. So we must understand that we must learn to enjoy where we are. Celebrate our little victories. Celebrate whatever it is that is going on. Even if it's hard, even if it's painful, just believe God and say, God, I thank you. Because if you, sometimes you watch the television, you see some people, thousands of people are going through a lot. When you compare yourself with them, not that you're comparing in a bad way, you think, oh God, I am blessed. My life is not as bad as I thought. Some people are homeless. They have no roof over their head. You have a roof over your head. Whether you're sleeping in a room, it doesn't matter. It is your room. It is your bed. You are not on somebody else's couch. But even if you're on somebody else's couch, thank God that they've allowed you to put your head on their couch because they could have said no. So whatever it is that you're going through, thank God for where you are as you believe him for greater things. So whatever it is that you need, I want to encourage you today that your time will come. Your time will come. Sarah, our great mother in the Bible, waited. She was about 1991 when she had Isaac. How many of us can wait that long? And then by the time Isaac was 36 years old, she died. But I wouldn't complain if I'm Sarah because she got about 127 years. Is that so, Pastor? And if you've got a child in 1991, you died 127, what God has done is his compressed time. He's allowed you to enjoy the fruit of your labor. So what am I saying? Some things that you're waiting for, even if it looks long, it means that God is saying he's going to extend your life. 
You are going to live long to enjoy it. You are not going to have your child and die tomorrow. You are not going to start that business and die tomorrow. So the longer you wait, it means that God is giving you the grace to live long. So delay is not denial. Your time will come. And even when people get their victories, celebrate with them. Today we have a family that is celebrating someone else's baby. As they are celebrating with them, God is also going to celebrate with them. Whenever someone has a blessing, learn to gather and celebrate celebrate others. It's not just about you. So when your own time comes, people will come and celebrate you. It's not time to be envious. It's not time to be jealous. It's not time to be competitive. But it is the time to say, thank God that God has done this for you. And I know that the God that did it for you is not a respecter of men. He's not a respecter of person. As I'm waiting in the queue, the queue is getting shorter. So if we're 10 in the queue, if one, two, three, four, five have gone, it means number six is your 10. Number seven is your 10. Number 8 is your turn. Number 10 is your turn. So your turn will come. Your time will come. But what you do in your period of waiting determines how quickly God comes to you. If you mourn, you complain, you always find troubles, which you always find. Even I say to married couples, if you look for negativity in your husband or your wife, you will find it. There is no one that is perfect. But what you do, you embrace the 80% that is good. You forget about the 20% that is not good. Because whatever you focus on increases. If you focus on the good, the good will increase. If you focus on the bad, the bad will increase. How many women here know that we can talk a lot? When your husband tells you, you talk too much. All oh, that statement will bring a thousand more words after that. You said, I talk too much. How do you know that I talk too much? Who told you that I talk too much? We go on and on and on and on because... There is a focus on the negativity. But when someone says, I bless God that God has graced me to marry such a beautiful woman like you. I thank God that God has found me fit. That among all women, you chose me and said, I'm going to be your bride. What do you do? Subconsciously, you, in, you expand. You increase that good part of that person. So whatever it is you have, child of God, appreciate it. Forget about the negatives. Think about what God has done. And I'll read Ruth chapter 2, verse 8. The story about Ruth when she met her husband, Boaz. And then Boaz said to Ruth, You will listen, my daughter, will you not? If you look at your Bible, there's a question mark. Boaz said, I'm going to talk to you, Ruth, as my future bride. But I wonder if you will listen or will you listen not? So this is the same thing that God says. He talks to us. But the honors is on us to listen. It says, do not glean in another field, nor go from here, but stay close to my young women. Let your eyes be on the field which they reap, and go after them. Have I not commanded the young men not to touch you? And when you go, you are thirsty, go to the vessels and drink. From what the young men have drawn. Boaz instructed Ruth to sit still, to focus, to stay connected, not to deviate, not to fret, not, not to let their eyes run around or go from field to field. So God is saying to us, stay connected. Don't fret. Don't run around looking for solutions. Do you know, in my former church, there was one brother he was proposing to so many sisters at the same time. The pastors have to call him to say, excuse me, what are you doing? How do you tell sister A, God has told you, you want to marry them, you jump from that, you go to sister B, you go and eat rice there, you jump from there, you go to sister Z, you go and pick her up and be driving and causing confusion. And the holy sisters now, they start having some underground fighting, some underground rivalry, because they are thinking, I thought he wants to marry me. What is he doing uh, carrying you? What is he doing coming to your house to eat? Until the elders were called, and the called men said, we are suspending all your proposals, because you are going from field to field. You are jumping from point A, B, C, and D. When you don't focus, it causes distraction. When God has given you a wife, what are you doing talking to another lady in the midnight hour? Anything that you have to hide, it means that it is wrong. What are you doing chatting with another man or another woman when you know that you know that you are belonging to somebody? Stay in your lane. 
be focused. Some people, they say they really love someone, but because they jump around, they end up losing the one that they really love. Because when the one they really love find out that you are going from field to field, they say, I'm not going that way with you anymore. Then you lose the one that you love. And in most cases, that's what happened. The things that are good and valuable, if you don't hold on to them, the devil will come in another way and steal it from you. So God is saying, stay in your field. Wait for your time. Wait for your moment. Wait for your time. For your time will come. And even Naomi told Ruth as well, the same instruction, but in a different way. In chapter 3, Ruth verse 18, he says, Then she said, Sit still, my daughter, until you know how the matter will turn out. For the man will not rest until he has concluded the matter this day. Naomi knew that if Ruth was not well instructed, she could be going around from field to field. Sometimes she might not even be doing anything. But you know gossipers now. They can say we saw Ruth in someone else's field. And we saw her talking to another man. Maybe there was no conversation going on. But people might misinterpret certain things. So Naomi said, sit still my daughter. The man will not rest until the matter is concluded. What is God saying to us today? Sit still my daughter. Sit still my son. I will not rest until you your breakthrough is concluded. I will not rest until your healing is concluded. I will not rest until your destiny is concluded. If only you can wait for his time. In him considering, thinking how best to go about in redeeming Ruth. Ruth had to wait patiently, not hastily. The word of God says, if you believe, why are you in a hurry? If you believe, why are you hasty? So if you really believe that God is going to do what he told you he's going to do, then wait. And when you wait, he will do it. In Isaiah 52, 12, God said to the children of Israel, you shall not go out in a haste. He said, you're not going to go out in a hurry. You're not going to go out running for your lives or fleeing. But the Lord God of Israel will go before you. The God of Israel will be your rear guard. God doesn't want us to run ahead of him. He doesn't want us to flee from problems. He doesn't want us to panic. He doesn't want us to be stressed. He doesn't want us to try and figure out. He said, I will go before you. And not only go before you, I will be behind you. And not only behind you, I will also be beside you. What an awesome God. A multi-dimensional God that is in the front, in the back, on the left, and the sides. So how can you fail when he is with you? God just wants us to align our lives, our destinies, and our purposes to him. And we should always remember that we didn't create ourselves. Someone put us here. There are many theories. People say all sorts of things that they want to say. But the people that are saying whatever they want to say, there are certain things that they can never define. There are certain things that they can never explain. So I choose to believe in the one that created me. The one that created the universe that I see. The one that tells us the time will come when we are going to live and we are going to die. And the time will come when we are going to mourn and be joyful. Because everything that the word has said, you can see it in the land of the living that it is happening. So whether we like it or not, no matter how rich you are, how powerful you are, when the time for the trumpet to sound, when God says it's time, you have to go. So when God is calling you and say, come my child, don't look at your neighbor. Don't worry about what your husband is thinking, your wife is thinking, your mom, your dad is thinking. Because the day you were brought into this world, you were on your own. So there are certain decisions, child of God, that you must take by yourself. Because the day you were created, you came on your own. Even twins, when they are born, they don't come the same time. The mother has to push them differently. Their time of birth is different. One is older one is younger but they're all born on the same day because of time so whatever it is that God is telling you to do hearken to him is it that business idea is it that vision is it your salvation is it your ministry what is it that God has told you Habakkuk 2 3 says the vision is for the future appointed time even if it's slow it's coming Wait patiently for it, for surely it will take place. It will not be delayed. 
And when God shows you the vision, many times we want to use our own calendar, but a thousand days is like 10,000 days. A day is like 10,000. It is God that knows the calendar, the program, and the right timing. Instead of us questioning God, being angry, and saying, where was God when coronavirus came? Where was God when my mother died? When was God? All those things, you can say them, they're not going to change anything. But the ability to accept the things that you cannot change. The ability to move on and say, God, encourage me. Where do I start? Where do I go from here? Teach me to number my days. Teach me, Lord, to know what I should do. And even in the point of waiting, God is working with you. David was fighting the lions, the bears in the wilderness. You didn't know that one day you will fight Goliath. That preparation, that process of time allowed him to gain the necessary skills to conquer the giant. And Esther was being prepared by God when she was praying and fasting. And Haman was preparing his gallows and trying to kill Mordecai in Esther chapter 7. But the reverse happened because of God's timing. It doesn't matter what Haman is doing. It doesn't matter what the devil is doing. The time he's preparing his evil plans. At the same time, the king was being provoked by God to bring the books of remembrance. And they saw that Mordecai had been good to the king and he was rewarded. Don't worry about what's happening around you. Don't worry about the fear, the news, the bad reports. God is planning as much as things are going on around. There's also a God that is supreme, that watches over everything, that is planning your life, planning your destiny. All you must learn to do is to focus, move on, stay connected, and believe in your God. And if you do that, you will do exploits. You will be encouraged, you will overcome because God is a good God. I don't know what it is that the Lord has said to you or the dreams, the visions. I know some people, they don't hear God audibly. Some people, when they read the scripture, that word jumps to their spirit. Or some people, they have dreams or they have visions. Or sometimes they just think of something. And when you think of that thing, you, you, you bring it to pass, it becomes explosive. Is God showing you what you're called for? Is God showing you what your passions, your desires, whatever it is that you want to do? Maybe it's just in your heart that you want to start a business. You didn't hear any audible voice, but there's a strong passion. There's a strong voice that is propelling you to do it is the voice of God because everything that is good comes from the father of all things that is good the father of lights the one that lives above us all so whatever it is that the Lord is telling you to do do it don't be worried don't compete with anyone run your race don't worry when other people seem to be pro progressing run your race don't be discouraged don't be tired don't give up because as long as you have breath, there is hope. As long as you have life, there is hope. The time has come. Even for you to know that Jesus is your Lord and Savior. This is the time. You can't come to church and hear about Christ and just ignore and shut the door. If he's talking to you today and saying, my child, this is the time for you to pursue me. This is the time for you to get to know me better. Open the door of your heart and let him in. The time has come. Tomorrow was never promised to anybody. We live in daily compartments, not knowing what will happen tomorrow. Whatever you don't have, celebrate God. Your time will come. And how many of you believe that your time will come? Can we stand this morning in reverence to God? And I just want you to agree with me as I pray with you today. That my time will come. Your time will come. Father, we pray today in the name of Jesus. Father, encourage every discouraged heart. Align everybody, oh God, that may not be functioning according to your schedule. Align them to your timings, oh God. You are the one that created us and put us here, oh God. And Father, we pray that way we align to your times and your seasons. And may we understand and have the grace and the patience to wait for our time. Father, we ask, oh God, today that bring us to yourself. Bring us to yourself today. Encourage us to know you better. Jesus is calling you today. Jesus is saying, open your heart. I want to come into your heart and live with you and teach you the way and show you how to live life and be your God and be your guide and show you the way. Open your heart today and just allow Jesus to come in.
Just ask Jesus that Jesus, I've been doing it all alone by myself, but I need you. And Father, Lord, I just want to accept you in my heart, not because of fear, but because of love. I just want you to know that I love you. And I just want to open up my heart today for you to come into my heart. Forgive me, Jesus. Wash me with your blood. Cleanse me with your sin, with, with your blood and remove all my sins. Cleanse me from my sins, Jesus. Wash me, cleanse me, purge me, Jesus. I want to know you, Daddy. I want to be aligned to your time. Jesus is calling you, come. Come and give your life to Jesus today. He wants you to know that he loves you. He wants you to know that you are unique. He created you specially because he wanted a son and a daughter. You are unique to him. Come to the cross. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus today. Just give your heart to God and say, God, I love you. Come into my heart today. Wash me with your blood. Forgive me of all my sins. Be the Lord and be the master, the captain, the driver of my life. I repent of all my sins. And Father, maybe I might have backslided or I've been doing things my way. I ask that you forgive me. Restore me to yourself. Teach me to live by your word. Teach me to understand your signs and your timings. Thank you, Jesus. Encourage every heart today. Bless every listener today. Align them to their time today. Give them the grace to wait for their time. The ability not to fret let it be released. Peace that passes all understanding. Yes, I'm going to give over to Overseer as he calls us forward.
and I ran straight into him. And it was March 1960 when I had this vision that there was the, the rapture. It's not in the Bible, you'll find it, but people were going up and I was left behind. And I sort of cried, God, how is it happening? See, some people don't believe that man is spirit, soul, and body, but it's true. And uh, I made my commitment to the Lord, 1960, first Sunday in April, and he's keeping me. And I was talking to a missionary a few weeks ago, and the Lord dropped a word in my spirit, and it's for us today, put the same word back in my spirit today, he said, you know, and it was in 1 Kings chapter 18, when the time of decision, uh, Elijah said, the 750 prophets, if God be God, serve him. And in other words, he was saying, choose. And pastor reminded us today that there's a time for everything, a time to live. I remember my son, Brother Jason, when he stood here, when he came from London, and he gave his first testimony how God has saved him. And you know, since his demise, his departure, a drop of tear don't come to my eyes because I know I'm going to see him again. I know I'm going to see him again. He is at rest today. When I look at his lovely brother today standing there, a new family who knew him and loved him, how could you be so careless as to say it was just another blessing before we're going away? But today is a day of decision when you can decide who to follow. Godparents, I don't know if the godparents are there really come eventually. Amen, they're here. So while I'm going to ask them to come to the altar today because I'm going to be praying for them, or the godparents, I'm asking those of you who came today to this blessing and you're not saved, let us pray for you today. I am not just putting religion into you. It's a relationship with somebody. God bless you, Godfather. Amen. I and this man looks so handsome. God bless me. And this lady, man. Yes, man. I hope you're not going to go to hell. No, you're not, are you? You want to go to heaven? Thank God. Amen. And there you are. And see, my little preacher man here was here this morning. That's right. Going to God, Mother. Amen. Yes. Now, those of you today listening to the word, you need, you need an altar. You need to make it right with God. Can we pray for somebody? Can, you, can I see the hand of somebody today who will say, pray for me? Is there another? That, that God bless that hand. That God bless that hand. There's a mark on you, son. Come here, my son. Oh, God bless you. I know that God has his hand in your life. Give me your hand. Thank you. You know the voice of the Lord, don't you? God bless you, son. Amen. Thank you. Just stand there with us. If there was somebody else today we can pray for. God bless you. God bless you, son. Just walk up here to me. Is there somebody else today? God bless you, man. God bless you. You know, son, you know, saints, when, when death angel just go into a city, we should not procrastinate. We should not procrastinate. And that big word, it's simple. All it means is that we should not put it off. Amen. Ah, uh, bless you. High five. Now, anybody else today? Amen. God bless you, man. Amen. God bless you, man. Is there somebody else today? Can I see another hand? Somebody saying, pray for me today. God bless you, man. Come on over here, dear. It's nice. Just come. God bless you, man. That God bless you. Long time the Lord been calling you, man. Today is your day. Somebody else today. Amen. God bless you, man. These are. These
with your own my picnics, my children, long time, and God is bringing you home today. And, and I, I just want you to know that. Isn't it so, man? Is there somebody else today? I'm taking time off to pray for you today. Anybody else? Anybody else for prayer today? Can I see another hand? You know, this, this man here, listen, this man here who is playing this instrument, he comes all the way from Emil Amsterdam today. And he, God bless you, my daughter. Yesterday we went all the way to the other side of Sunday. Lady was married and she had some head teachers and, and uh, great people there we're talking to. And we thought, my God, she comes all the way from Sunday to worship here. God is calling his people today. Hey. I don't know if you know this, the line of this song. Would you, would you? The, the, verse sec the second verse of that song, you know it? We, oh, yeah, good. We will get you to know it. Yeah. Because what it means is if you would just make a turn to God, it'll make all the difference. I saw you slapping Godmother. I'm going to slap you for that. Yes, I saw it. Amen. You were just blessed. Now, you got parents. You, you just happen to know today that we love you. We had to do the blessing earlier because we plan to do it because the Lord has shown me that the end of the service today will be with a blessing for you. Now, and it's all right for all this, but please don't be late for heaven because once the door is shut, it is shut. I may be the biggest fool in here, but when I was only in my early 20s, yes, I gave my life to the Lord, and I have no regrets. You won't lose, young men. You won't lose. You won't lose. The biggest fool of all is the one who have lost everything for nothing. I have hope today that I have heaven. I'm going to ask some of my officers and leaders you know, thank God that we can come today to come nearer to you and be friendly with you. Amen. And, uh, and to let you know that this is not about religion, it's about a relationship with somebody who loves you. Yes, God bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, Can I ask you, beloved, you have made the sacrifices and I love it. That song, there were 99 that were safely laid in the shelter of the fold, but one? Now, oh God, I feel the love of God. And then after we're just going to um, thank God for our pastor today and sing happy birthday to her and to those who celebrated their birthday. And I don't know what we would have done in miracle without you, Pastor Carl. God bless us for bringing you here to share with us and to be part of miracle. And all you officers and leaders, God bless you. Specifically this day, I thank God for this altar. Amen. Somebody for me. There were ninety and nine that were safely laid in the shelter. In the shelter.
with you. That's all. If you are not saved, you are away from the tender shepherd's care. But today you have come to the tender shepherd's care. God bless you. Pray this at the prayer with me, loved ones at this altar. You see in the same song, you know, the, the, sh the, the sheep didn't know what was happening, but the shepherd did. Vultures were hanging over, ready for dead flesh, but the shepherd was seeking the sheep. So pray this little prayer with me, lovely, you lovely people at this altar today. Dear Jesus, help send for me somebody, dear Jesus, this day, I come to you. I know that I am not saved. I am lost, rejected, lonely, sometimes so, so lost that I don't know who I really am. But this day, I come to you. I ask you to save me as I turn my back on all of my sins, all of my sins. I denounce the devil. Satan is no longer my Christ, son of the living God. He is my Lord and my master. And I promise you, Father, as long as I live, I will serve you. You are my Lord. You are my Lord for time and for time and for eternity. Thank you now for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. You know, I was saying, and just to relax with me, we were in Bedford Prison, and one Sunday morning, that place should only take about 75 or so inmates. That specific Sunday morning, they had 105 inmates in there. And the simple way we gave the message, you know, that morning, 100 inmates turned their life to Jesus Christ, right over here. What it's all about is you've tried everything. Uh, maybe some of you are waiting to try some things, but no, it's a mistake. God set us as a watchman, watchmen, watchwomen to warn you some things out there are seriously dangerous. The only real person is Jesus Christ. And he will love you when your lives are down and he will love you when it's up. If you put your hands in his hand today, I can assure you, you will never fail because he is the only one that will not let you down. Come here, come to me. If you are here today to hear our singing, the next baptism, she's going to be baptized. Only how old are you? 11 and she can us and she's going to be baptized. And it's nice to see your uncles here with you today, and they're going to be at your baptism. And who knows, they may be getting baptized at the same time too. You never know, isn't it? Wouldn't it be good? Thank you. God bless you. I'm not going to hold you back much longer, but some of the officers will take you if you need a Bible, if you need some help and they will make sure they give you something so that they may even take your name so it can do something for you. If you have any need, could it be financial? Could it be spiritual? Otherwise, that's why we are church. We are here for you. You will never be left alone. We want to help you to make it in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Right now, saints, as you bow your heads with me today, Father, thank you, thank you. You told me that you are in the saving business and you send us to go and warn the people that really 
Amen. Really, the time is at hand when we must serve Jesus. And thank you today for all these loved ones who have turned their lives to you. Bless them now and keep them safe. Give them fortitude, Father. And let it not be just a morning or a day at the altar and it's forgotten. Let that conviction, Father, follow them where they go, wherever they go, in Jesus' name, amen. Thank you. And remember, it's not about feelings. And say, I didn't feel anything. I wasn't rolling on the floor. It's not about that. It's about believing God that today he's intelligent enough to keep you. God bless you. Amen. Thanks very much. Now, missionaries, evangelists, now, that, can you all go back to that place? And they'll take your name, yes, and they'll talk with you. God, give you a letter. Uh, give you a Bible, whatever they can do. Just stand there, back, go back there and stand there for me. Amen. Just stand over that seat, near that seat now. And where is done? That is done, that is done. Amen. God bless you. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Now, while you're standing there, Pastor, will you please come? Keep standing with me. I don't want to keep you standing for too long. Amen. All right. Sorry. Those, take, take them, Pastor, those who want their name in the vestry for me. Those who would like to give Pastor your name for prayers, especially God parent, God fathers and mothers just go with him and give your name and we'll pray for you